Hello everyone, it is month 17 of our passive income portfolio, so that means it is time to buy a stock. Yeah. This month we are choosing between stocks ranging from boring to extremely. That's right folks. But boring gets us predictable money, which we like. Our spreadsheet that we put together narrowed it down to Campbell Soup, International Paper, and AT&T, which we already own. Which one did we pick and add to our passive income this month? Stick around as we go through the boring numbers for the stock this month and show you our portfolio and the passive income it generates for us so far. But don't go following blindly along. Please consult your financial advisor before doing boring things like making a crap ton of money like us. All right, let's get into it. As you know, we have a monthly spreadsheet that goes through all the boring things that really nobody cares about, but apparently my nerdy ego. But they're necessary to make an informed decision. What you'll see this time around is a continuation of last month's purchase. The numbers are doing exactly what we would expect. The cash flow is dropping, the PMI index is, is going down, the effects of the Fed's raising rates is being felt. We're starting to finally see it. It took eight months. <laughs> Didn't know it would take that long, but here they are. When we looked at the spreadsheet and boiled down these numbers, there was a bunch of other stocks we looked at that are not on the spreadsheet, and those numbers looked pretty much the same. What we're trying to do is get in front of the Fed's inflation battle and make sure that what we purchase can weather that, and then when they say they're done, we're gonna be a lot more positive, but they're not done yet. So we have to hurry up and wait, which is kind of boring, but eh. Yeah. Again, we have to buy something because we put this stupid mandate on ourselves to buy a stock every month. So here is the Why? best of the bad. <laughs> Why? The first one that is on this list of the three, AT&T has a lot of news surrounding it. They dropped from somewhere around the low 20s, early uh, late teens, all the way down to like $14 a share. And why? Well. We think it was a little bit oversold, but there is a lot of news surrounding a lead, potentially in some of their wiring, and that was already baked into their balance sheet, but that people didn't know that. So here comes sell-off number one. <laughs> sell-off number two is related to uh, at and debt to equity ratio. They have, they're very highly leveraged. This is a company that makes relatively good money, but they pay a huge dividend, which puts negative pressure on the price in its own right. Plus, for a long time, AT&T kind of lost their identity a little bit. I mean, they had Warner Brothers, they had all these different business segments, and now what they're trying to do is bring that back down to some core business models and streamline that. But the story the whole time there has been their debt to equity ratio and how much debt and how leveraged they are. They're trying to fix it. The executives came out and they did the most recent investor report and said they consolidated $4 billion and we're expecting to see that continue. One of the things we liked that we saw with AT&T is that they beat their earnings and that their net income took a positive turn, finally, but you're not gonna see up in the annual numbers. So if you wanna look at what has, is happening with AT&T right now, look at their quarterly numbers. That's AT&T, they do pay a 7.68% dividend at the price of about $14 a share. That's nice, but don't expect it for long. Expect about 4.6 or 5%. That's a more reasonable dividend. If you wanna see how that relates, Verizon is a pretty close competitor to them in many respects. So you could look at what Verizon pays, what AT&T pays, and justify that based on operating cash flow. Let's cover international paper. This one doesn't have a lot of news surrounding them. They supply paper products, pulp, basically for products and packages all over the place. Like if you buy an Amazon box and it's got a cardboard box or corrugated box, there's a good chance, not all the time, but like 40 some odd percent of their packages are from international paper. Plus yeah. they, they supply schools. Yeah, and corrugated boxes are, or corrugated cardboard is one of their largest producers for yeah. them. They have a corner on the market, so they're not a very exciting company to cover. They did go through a restructuring based on the falling manufacturing demand. They had staff reductions. They have been trying to restructure based on that. Some of the wildfires affected some of their areas that they, they get this product from. International Paper has a multi-year cycle that sometimes are at $50 a share. And then the, back in uh, early July, they went down to like $31 a share. And I thought, holy crap. So I bought some personally and I thought, well, maybe we could do that for dividend dudes. The problem was by the time we had it on the spreadsheet and the, by the time it actually got to where we can talk about it today, they went up 20% from that. 
no longer was a buy. No longer seemed like a good buy. We covered them, we looked at it, there's not a lot of uh, news behind them. Their financials, they had an earnings beat, so that looks pretty good. Looks like they're recovering pretty well. Our cautionary tale on this one is they really want to look at manufacturing demand, where these people supply packaging for that. Going into the school years is usually a little bit better for them. We're looking at international paper, we're looking at a buy. The thing that we didn't like to see was the fact that the global economy is showing a, a reduction in demand, and that does affect these guys. They did try to stave that off a bit with the staff reductions, and they've been consolidating costs across the board. And you can see that with their restructure. Important thing to note is when a company needs money and they're a publicly traded company, the stock price and the shares, when you buy that stock, that's how they get their money. So if they go from $50 a share down to 30, like International Paper did, it becomes kind of difficult for them to spend the money that just left their bank account. <laughs> right. It's not quite like that. It doesn't work like that 100% of the way, but that's the general gist of it. So, so what do you do? Generally, they send more shares out to get more money to get that bank account back. And that's a whole separate conversation, but we're not gonna get into that in this video, maybe another one. The third stock we looked at was Campbell Soup. This is the second time Campbell Soup has come up on our list. And they looked pretty good during the last report. They just did a Q2 report, at least Q2 for us, that's like Q4 for them. <laughs> or if you're watching this in the future, it's, you know, Q96 or... <laughs> that's a lot of quarters, I know. I'm like 95 or something at that point. <laughs> Campbell Soup, they've been moving their headquarters. They are closing their office in Charlotte. They are kind of in a weird position right now. For a long time, Campbell Soup was kind of the go-to for canned goods. They still are. The difference is, is the, this generation, our generation and younger, is there's a stigma around unhealthy foods. And Campbell Soup, with all the salt that's in their food, is right at the helm of that. In fact, the CEO talked about he's never seen an environment where that was such an issue. So they're in the middle of this very big paradigm shift where they're trying to change the image of the company. They're trying to change even the, the, the ingredients and the, uh, the, the type of soups that they make. So they're trying to center around this healthy movement, which I think it's a good thing but they haven't done it yet. It's gonna take time and money to make that transition. And even if they do make the transition, there's no guarantee that it's gonna pay off. You're right. really gambling with how they're going to steer the company in the future. Yeah, and that shows up in a negative light for the business right now, but where it's positive, and maybe my children have everything to do with this. Kids love goldfish. Goldfish, they can make 1,500 goldfish a second. That's a lot of goldfish. You know what? High schoolers won't admit it, but they like goldfish too. I like goldfish. <laughs> Everybody likes goldfish. And they've got like every single different flavor known to man. So their snack division is a bright spot in the company. And we feel that that pads them uh, to be able to transition their soup division and make that more of a healthy alternative. They did get through the aluminum shortage that was happening last year. We talked about that in the past video. So that's a that big COVID them. thing too. This one looks a little bit better. We're gonna continue to look at Campbell's soup because that part looks good. What might not look good for the share price, the stock though, is they just purchased, um, I get this name wrong every time, like Sovos? Sovos. Sovos, I think. So Sovos, Ra Rao's sauce. Rao's. So they're they're acquiring that and they bought it for 2.7 billion dollars. Good spaghetti sauce, by the way. Long term, great for growth. Short term, doesn't make the numbers look so good. We we like the stock. We want to see how this transition plays out before we get to our actual purchase. So what do we buy? We doubled down in AT and T. Just like that. Yeah. Brian is right. We did double down on AT&T this month. Why? Well, we think that they are oversold. Is it a risky play? To some degree, yes. AT&T has an operating issue that they're trying to correct, but they did show in the last report a net subscription ad and they did beat on their earnings. In addition to their $4 billion uh, deficit reduction, they are showing further cost consolidations and focus on the company and we like that. Plus, AT&T has a corner on a market that's gonna be kind of hard to get them out of it. I mean, they only 
own a lot of infrastructure. Right. We also feel that their $1.8 billion that was accommodated for their wiring issue, was it was already in the budget, and everybody thought that it wasn't in the budget, so we feel like the stock is oversold. In fact, when you look into the financial numbers, the stock has dropped more. It, at the time of purchase, it was under $14 a share when we bought it, or it was somewhere around there. Um, that was greater than the net subscription ads and the cash flow changes and all the stuff. If you, if you did some really nice math around their net operating income, their cash flow basis, and the debt reduction for the total liabilities, it's a pot, those were positive things, yet the stock was beaten up. I would have expected them to get beat up because, sorry AT&T, you deserve it a little bit. You got a lot of debt. You need to fix that. But I didn't expect them to get beat up that much. Well, that's Mr. Market for you. He's a fickle guy. No kidding. <laughs> so we decided to double down on it and our theoretical $420 a month investor got a bonus last month. Yay, so we got greedy and we bought double the amount this month, which brings our portfolio to, was it like $27, $26 a month? 26 something and change, yeah, a month. Next month, we're going to be continuing to watch that PMI index. We're gonna be watching what's happening with uh, China, especially China just showed a report that talks about uh, they're going through deflation. And if you don't know why deflation is bad, please comment below and we'll talk about it. We'll cover that a little bit more in depth. But when China has deflated prices and they start shipping products to the United States, there's an impact there. <laughs> so we're gonna be watching China. We're gonna be covering, we're gonna look at Campbell Soup again. And if you guys have any stocks you would like us to add to the spreadsheet, please tell us, please comment on that and we'll add comment it. Comment below. Yep, and we'll take a look. We'll, we'll do through all our numbers and maybe, who knows, maybe we'll add it to our portfolio. But with that, we appreciate you watching. Yes. And hope to see you in the next video. And as always, Happy, Happy investing. investing. Next month we will cover ninjas. Ninja, ninja. Next ninja. month, ninja. Maybe we will be ninjas. Ninja. <laughs> this income is going to save your life. Like that.